Hello, family church. Let's all stand together as we sing some praises tonight to give God glory. That is why we are here. That is 100% the reason we are here, to glorify our God and our maker. Let's sing to him. That is the reason we are here. That is the goal of all of the illuminates that we do, is we have one Savior, Jesus. He's our Messiah, and to him alone belongs all of our praise. That is our goal of all illuminates. 
And tonight we're going to kind of pause just a few moments here and there to talk over just, just kind of talk about worship. In different nights we've talked about, you know, different themes of God's, God's faithfulness and God's power. But tonight we're going to talk about worship. And uh, one of the famous worship passages is when Jesus asked himself, he said, someone asked him, a Pharisee asked him, what is the greatest commandment? And he just said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And uh, I think of that when Jesus says that love, and he gives us extra things, say, love, th love this way, love this way, love this way. Love is a very powerful emotion, but it's not just an emotion, it's also a choice and an action. We choose to love. He's wanting us to choose to love him. Actually, he's wanting us to value him higher than anything else. The key to really genuinely praising God is also prizing God, that he is your prize. He is, he is that pearl of great price that you are willing to sacrifice everything for. So let's pray. That's how we're gonna worship him tonight. That is our goal. Oh, Lord God, we want to praise you. We want to praise you above anything else. We want to worship you, Lord, with our whole heart, with our whole soul, with our whole mind, all of our strength. We want to praise you and love you. That is the kind of God you are. That's the kind of God you deserve. I mean, you are the kind of God. That's the kind of praise you deserve, Lord. That's the kind of praise you deserve. So, Lord, we, we are here for you to give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
everything that we just sang it to be. You were the word, which means you were there at creation, which means you are the truth. And that word brought us to the knowledge of you. And you are the way, the way to heaven, the way to all things wonderful. You are love. And there is no love outside of you. You are good, and there is no good outside of you. You are power. You are God Almighty, the Lord of Heaven's armies. And you give us that power through that beautiful name. There's nothing we could do to thank you enough for that. And yet, we don't take advantage of it enough, Lord. So right now, we choose to look at the battle that you've placed in front of us, to look at the struggle that we're going through, to look at the obstacle that we have. And right now, we speak the name of Jesus over that. We speak goodness over that we speak power over that we speak freedom we speak all the things Lord that you are and we take that and we will run with it Lord we believe you and we trust you and we will walk where you tell us to walk in your power in your beautiful name. Amen. I don't want you guys to feel like you have to stand the whole night. I know some of you want to, but if you want to take a seat, you can. There may be another time when we ask you to stand, but I'm going to talk for a couple minutes, so it might be a good time to take a little break. But I think one of the most important things that we need to know as believers is what our new and true identity is. And Jesus had a conversation with a woman and he completely flipped her identity. And it was a conversation about worship. And he said to her, the hour is coming and now is here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. See, to even to have that conversation with her in the first place, he had to break down all kinds of cultural barriers. She was at a well in the middle of the day because she was ashamed of who she was. The identity that had been put onto her was one of shame and guilt, and both sides rejected her. And even, I think she, it, to some degree, she felt like she was rejected in herself. But Jesus just broke down the barrier and talked to her. And he used those words, spirit and in truth, because she was, when she kind of understanding that he might be the Messiah, then she started flipping the, the script and started talking about worshiping on mountains and worshiping in temples. And he said, God is spirit. He's not bound by this physical world. He wants worshipers that worship him in spirit. And he said, worship is from our spirit. And he said, truth, worship must be in truth. I think there's two meanings there. 
We must do it in genuine truth. We must really want to worship him. It's not something we're faking. Like oftentimes we come to church and we're in control. We do our duty, we leave and we're in control and we never let the spirit be in control. We need to genuinely worship him from our true self. And we also need to worship the true God, not of our own, our own understanding of who God we think God might be. We need to worship him, the real God. Not our definition of God, but his definition of who he says he is. So he, Jesus, gave this woman hope. She walked that day to get some water from the well in the hot of the day. And she was a hopeless person just making it through life. And Jesus said, here's your true identity. Now come to the Father in spirit and in truth in real worship to a real God who really loves you. You don't have to go on a mountaintop. You don't have to go to the temple. Your heart is enough. Your heart is enough. And the only reason why her heart was enough is because Jesus made it enough. He the one that did it. We're going to sing the song that I think really speaks to that thought of our identity. We believe all of these lies and these just falsities on us. Whether they come from outside sources or sometimes actually the worst critics of ourselves or sometimes our own words. I can tell you I'm very guilty of a lot of negative self-talk. I need Jesus to break down the barriers and give me that new identity. This is who you are.
Save and trust I will obey Please me out of following your way I'm not chasing feelings Spirit me Oh Spirit present with us, though that would be enough. But Lord, we ask you to lead us, 
to change us, to transform us, Lord, to give us the courage to, to have those responses that when you say it's wrong, we will obey and say no. And when you say to jump in, we will do it, both feet, without even thinking. Spirit, lead us. Without you, there is no worship. We would just be here singing songs and making music. It would be solely for us. Lord, that is not our desire. Our desire is to worship you, to bring you praise. So we need your spirit in us, moving through us, which will bind us closer together as a family, as a church who wants to praise you. We love you, Lord. We ask you for this. I just want to be close to your heart This is where my healing finds its start Here is where I find my peace Where my soul's finally free I'm going all in in over my Scared to get to rest in your love Wherever you go, God, I will fall I'm not scared to get lost in your love I don't have to see where this world Just as long as my hands in your head Here is where I want to stay Held within your sweet embrace Oh, I'm going on it And over my head I'm not scared to get to rest trust you, Father, where my every fear has to surrender, I will trust in you forever, take me there, oh take me there, cause your power is found in your face waters, where I have no choice but to trust you, Father. Fear has to surrender I will trust in you forever Take me there Oh, take me there I'm going on it And over my head I'm not scared to get drenched in your love Oh, wherever 
feel the warmth of your embrace Help me find a way Oh, bring me back to Those things give us temporary physical life, Lord, but your love, your grace, your mercy, you give us eternal life. You take these dead vessels and give them life. You make us alive, Lord. So Lord, we need you. Whether we realize it or not, we need you. So draw us closer and closer and closer. That's what we need, Lord. You're all that we want. And you're all that we need. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Man, that's good stuff, huh? So Romans 12, 1 and 2 says this. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. In view of God's mercy, do this. He has forgiven us of more than we could, we could ever even imagine. The sins that we don't even know about, he's forgiven us about. But that whole idea of offer yourself as a living sacrifice, your body, that goes back to what Jesus said earlier. He said, love the Lord God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. That is what, what he's, your body, everything that you are is on the altar. In fact, the song we sang, Spirit Lead Me, there's a line that says, my life is an altar. My life is an altar. A life of worship, surrendered to him. And then that transformation, that renewing of your mind that leads to transformation that is solely done by the Spirit, as we've been singing about and talking about. But I like this part at the end. I think a lot of times we miss this part. So that you will be able to test and approve of God's will. If you're allowing the Spirit to renew your mind and transform your heart, and then he's telling you to do something that you need to obey, you see it and you say, that's God's will for my life. And it could be a tough thing, but you still approve of it. You still think it's good. You see God's will and you like it. 
I think in many ways, even Satan can see God's will, but he just doesn't like it. He tries to go against it all the time. He tries to get us to go against it. But when we have the Holy Spirit flowing through us and moving us and, and guiding every step we take, every breath we breathe, when we see God's will, even if it's hard, we say, I know it, God, that's good. That is a good thing, and I approve of that will. So our life is an altar. Our life is an altar given to him. So as we sing this next song, remember, it's not just altar calls that we come up here and give our life one time and then we're done. Everything that we have needs to be put on the altar for God. Every breath we take, everything we do, our life is the altar.
you stood before creation, eternity in your end. You spoke the earth into motion, my soul now to stay. You stood before my failure and carried the cross for my shame. My sin weighed upon your shoulders, my soul now to stay. So, what can I say?
want you to just take a few moments and just connect with the Lord. We're just going to play for you. Just repeat that last line to the Lord yourself in your heart. All I am is yours. tapping something on your heart that you're holding on to that if you're honest you would say is not his that is still you're holding on to he's inviting you to let it go to give it to him so that you can truly say that all you are is his our arms high as a way of showing that our hearts are going up to you like a child to a father. A father whose arms are open wide, always open wide. And our life is an altar to you, Lord. so hard to let go of control, Lord. Everywhere we go, we need to be in control. But Lord, what you desire is for us to be controlled by you, that you would guide our steps, that you would help us to see what you want us to see, to break our heart for the same things that break your heart, Lord. That's what genuine transformation looks like. So that's my prayer tonight, Lord, is that you would touch our hearts so that we would surrender control to you. That you would renew our minds and transform our hearts. And give us a new purpose, a new sense of identity.
that we want to leave here tonight. Your worship is not ending right now. It is just getting started. We go home and we go about our lives, Lord, but we want you to be in control. To come to your altar. Let you move in us. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. In your perfect name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us here tonight to worship with us. It is great to just be in a room full of people that love the Lord, praising him. Thanks for coming, and uh, we'll see you guys next.